day. I've come again before you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Solomon, by our food we shall be known. This morning I came with a message which I tied to, who is a Christian? Hallelujah. God has given us his spirit, and by his spirit we are made one with God. Jesus said, me and my father we are one. And Jesus told the disciples that I will send my spirit into your spirit, and you will become one with me as I am one with the Father. Hallelujah. So if you are a Christian, you should have the spirit of God in your spirit. Hallelujah. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night in the book of John 3, Galilee from verse 1 to the end. But they would like us to go from verse 5 to 8 for us to see what Jesus said to Nicodemus. John 3, from verse 5. I'll read to Jesus' name. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blew wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, what I have come to realize about being born again or being a Christian is that to, to, be, to be a Christian or to be born again, you must be born by God's Spirit in your, in your life. Jesus says, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot, he cannot enter eternal life. Now, this is the foundation of a Christian here on earth. If you are a Christian and you have not been born with the water and the Spirit, then I wonder, what, what have you been? What have you been learning or hearing all, the, all this while? Hallelujah. Now Jesus made it to Nicodemus that unless we are born of water and the Spirit, we cannot enter, we cannot make internal life. Then he goes further to say that anyone that is born of the Spirit is like a wind. Nobody knows where they come from, nobody knows where they are going to. It is with those who are born of the Spirit. Now you come today, you see why there are a lot of confusion in the body of Christ today. Because those who are trying to lead us or to teach us, they themselves, they don't understand the concept of who is a born again. In another word, Jesus means that if you are a born again, you are unpredictable. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody can truly explain your life because your life is, your life is being guided and directed by God's Spirit himself. Hallelujah. When you go back to the Old Testament, you see the prophet of old. You see how they were being directed by God's Spirit. God said to Ezekiel, lie down one side, 40 days. Lie down another side, 365 days. Now, in our days today, if we desire to act like that, People will say we are being possessed with evil spirits. Jesus make it clear that anyone that is born of God's spirit is like a wind. Nobody knows where they are coming from. Nobody knows where they are going to. Now, if we are Christians born of God's spirit, we should obey God's directive and direction in our life at all times. In that same book of Ezekiel, God asked Ezekiel to, to make food with human excrement. Today, if we decide to act with God's spirit and God's direction, people will be questioning our Christianity. Jesus makes it very clear. Anyone that is born of God's spirit is like a wind. Nobody knows where they go and nobody knows where they come from. Now, when you go back to that very message of who is a born again, who is a Christian, you will, you will come to agree with me that if you have not yet been baptized, with the Spirit of God, you cannot be called Christian. And the question is, how can I be baptized with God's Spirit? 
the, the answer is on that same book of John 3 from verse 5. Jesus said, unless we are born with the water and with the spirit. Being born with the water does not mean you should go to a river and dip yourself in the river and stand up and say you are born again. No. Being born with the water means you allow God's wet. God's water. This is God's wet. The wet of God is the, is the water of God. You allow the water of God to transform your mind, to renew your mind. Like what Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans 12 from verse 1 and 2. He said, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of the things of this way, but let your mind be renewed. Hallelujah. We allow our mind to be watched with the water of God. When we have been thoroughly watched with the water of God, and our spirit is ready for the Master, the Holy Ghost, then now we are being baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. Now when we are being baptized with the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit comes inside of us and dwells in us. And now when God's Spirit comes and dwells in you, you become unpredictable. You become a superman in this way. Hallelujah. And now there is no formula how we can be baptized with God's Spirit. There is no formula. What I'm trying to say is that when you are, when you are finally understand God's scripture, you know God's words, you have been washed with God's word in your spirit. God can decide to baptize you even when you are in your bedroom sleeping alone. God can baptize you. He does it as it will. There is no formula that you must be submissive to a man of God, you must be submissive to a to a, to a mentor or to whoever. There is no formula. The Bible makes me to understand that John the Baptist arose in his days and started the ministry of God. And you could see that John the Baptist was standing on the sure foundation of Christ. His, 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 his ministry was standing on righteousness, holiness, and faithfulness. Because he accepted God's teaching from the very Bible that the Pharisees they were reading. But he allowed his heart to be watched. He allowed his spirit to be watched. And God baptized him with his spirit. Hallelujah. Go to the Old Testament. You see men and women of old. You never hear who pray for them before they become anointed. Or who pray for them before they receive the Holy Spirit. God's spirit came upon them. And they began to do the work of God as they were directed by God's spirit in their life. Hallelujah. Coming back to our days. Let us go to the book of John 13, from verse 6. You see, when Jesus himself was speaking with his disciples, John 13, from verse 6, I'll tell you from verse 7. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. That is Jesus replying to Peter. Now, by this statement, Jesus said to Peter, You are already clean. And he goes further to say, everyone that has already been clean, he needs only his feet to be watched. Now you, you understand that when Apostle Paul encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus, Damascus, before he encountered Jesus, he was a scholar of the scripture. He knew the word of God, but he knew it in a wrong way. So by the time he encountered Christ, by the time Christ revealed himself to Apostle Paul, he could easily be converted to Christ, and the word of God that he already knew in his spirit was redirected to the right, to the, to, to, to the right source. That is why he received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, for us to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, for us to become a Christian, we must allow the word of God to watch us first. We must be thoroughly 
much with the word of God. Our mind must completely change. Our spirit must be completely adopted by God's spirit. Hallelujah. We allow God's spirit to adopt, adapt our spirits. We no longer think, act like the people of this way. But we begin to think like our heavenly father. Because this earth is not our home. Heaven is our home. Hallelujah. Unless you allow the water of God to come upon you and wash you. Unless you allow God's spirit to come upon you and wash you. You will continue to be toasted. Left and right. Doubting, thinking. Imagine, thinking you are a Christian. Hallelujah. All right. Now going back to the book of. Going back to the book of John 5. From verse 39. 38, 39 and 40. We see what Jesus himself was addressing the Pharisees. From verse 38. Nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You diligently study the scripture, because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the, these are the scripture that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Hallelujah. Today, many of us Christians, we, 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 we have put our hope in studying the Bible. Very good, no doubt about that. But Jesus was addressing a very critical component that has been missing in, every, in many believers' lives today. Jesus said, you diligently study the scripture day and night, thinking with them, you possess internal life. They said, but you have refused to come to me. How do we refuse to come to Jesus today? We refuse to come to Jesus today by refusing to allow our mind to be watched. Remember Judas Iscariot? He was one of Jesus' disciples. He walked around the whole city with Jesus. He did everything that Apostle Paul did. He was with, I mean, the Apostle of Jesus they do, they did. He was with them. But he refused to be watched by the teaching of Jesus Christ. He allowed the devil to enter him, influence him to sow Jesus. Why? Because he refused to allow his mind to be watched. Today, if you are a Christian listening to me, I urge you to allow God's spirit to watch you. Allow God's word to watch you. Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirits. When you allow God's word to enter your heart, and you begin to act upon the word of God, you begin to act upon the word of God, before you know, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus Christ himself says, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. For us to enter into the fellowship of Christ, for us to be called Christians, we must be born of God's spirit. It is not enough for you to be baptized with water, but you must also be baptized with the spirit of Jesus Christ. It is only when you are baptized in the spirit of Jesus Christ, you begin to honor God with your life. You begin to honor God with everything that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. Now the Bible tells us that in that book of 2 Corinthians 3, from verse 6, it says this, the, the letter killed, the letter which is the word of God, the, 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 the written word, the letter key, the God's spirit gave a light. Let us go and see it. Second Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3, from verse 6. I will read in Jesus' name. Verse 6, verse 6. He has made us complete, competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter keys, but the spirit giveth light, life. Amen. Now, when we have been born of God, when we are born again, we got spirit. We, be, we, 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 we are born of God's spirit. The Bible says God's spirit is life. God's spirit is life. Hallelujah. And God's spirit is light. If God's spirit is born in your spirit, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are no longer toasted left and 
characterized by emotion, by things that your eyes see or your ear hears. Yes, you will hear what people say about you, but you will not be moved by what people say about you. You, hear, you, you will see people acting funny about you, but you will not be moved by what people say about you. Why? Because you are no longer a natural man. You are not a superman in your own way. Because God's spirit has been born in you. You have been born of God's spirit. Hallelujah. Now when we are born of God's spirit, just like what the Bible says, the spirit goes anywhere as it pleases. As you don't know where the wind is coming from, and you don't know where the, the wind is going, it's, uh, it is the same as if you have been born of God. Amen. Now, to be a born again, to be a, a, a born again child of God, a Christian, you must be unpredictable. People must not even know you. The Bible says what we know we destroy. And what we don't know we call names. Yes, it is how God himself designed it to be. Because if the devil could master you, know you, he could easily trap you and bring you down. So Jesus designed us to be like spirits, to operate like spirit that nobody knows where we come from and nobody knows where we are going to. Amen. Let us continue to read in the book of First Corinthians 12, from verse 6 and 7. First Corinthians... 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. I'll take it from verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 7. It says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one that is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same spirit, to another gift of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing, distinguishing, distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determined. Hallelujah. Now, if you call yourself a Christian and you understand what I'm teaching you here today, you will understand why Pastor B is operating the way that you don't know. You will understand why Pastor C is operating the way that you are doubting. The Bible says God's Spirit does as it will. It gives us different manifestation. We cannot manifest in the same fashion. The Bible says he makes some to be apostles, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, some to be teachers. Why? For the edification of God's children. Hallelujah. That is the wisdom of God. So we cannot come to ourselves, Christian, we think we can know be, we can know see, we can know do. For example, our father of faith, Prophet Timothy Joshua, before he passed on to glory, many people, many people question his ministry. When was he born again? By my teaching, I understand that God does as it will. God can pick you out of a Sangoma shrine and fill you with his spirit as long as you've got the heart to do his work. It doesn't mean you must go and be submit under the water before you become born again. My Bible makes me to understand that when you have been washed with God's water, God's spirit, if God's spirit wash your heart, wash your mind, and your mind has been transformed and be ready for God's spirit, God can come and baptize you. He does it as it will. He doesn't consult anybody to baptize you with his spirit. He doesn't consult anybody to baptize you with his spirit. In the case of Paul and Ananias, that was an exceptional case. Hallelujah. John the Baptist rise up and he was in the wilderness preaching the good news of repentance, calling the people to repent. Who baptized John the Baptist? The God's spirit came upon him and he received God's spirit and he began to do the work of God. So if you are a Christian, it is time for you to free your heart, allow God's spirit to come into your life. Because when God's spirit comes into your life, you begin to operate supernaturally. When God's spirit comes to your life, you begin to act supernaturally. Like the days of the apostle of the old. When you read the story, when you read the book of, of 1 Corinthians 14, when the Bible was talking about speaking in tongues, you will see that the early Christians, they received God's spirit. That's why you see they were having that confusion in their days. 
Because everybody was manifesting God's spirit when they come to worship God. That's why they, they could just be speaking in tongues prophet, prophetically. Why? Because God's spirit have come upon them all. Hallelujah. Today we have church of God that we call ourselves church, we call ourselves Christians, but none of us we are baptized with God's spirit. Hallelujah. It is time for us to return to God's presence and, for, and ask for mercy and ask God to baptize you with his spirit. Until you are born again, until you are baptized with God's spirit, you are not yet a Christian. Until you are born of God's spirit, you are not yet a Christian. Hallelujah. There is no formula, remember. There is no formula. The only thing you need to do, you need to allow God's word to wash you. You need to allow God's word to wash you. And when God's word begins to wash you, your mind begins to cleanse. Your life begins to transform. Your life begins to have new meaning. Hallelujah. And now when your life has been transformed, watch with the word of God. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop the spirit of God from coming into your life. And when God's spirit comes into your life, it's the beginning of the journey. Hallelujah. Remember, in the university of God, in God's kingdom, in God's process, no matter how brilliant you are, there is no shortcut. There is no double promotion. Every courses that God has ordained for you, you will go through that courses. No matter how brilliant you might be, you will go through that courses. Because each of those courses that God has designed for you, programmed for you, they are there for your own good. They are there for God's glory to manifest mightily for your own life. Hallelujah. You can receive God's spirit today, then the following day you go into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Jesus Christ. The Bible said immediately he was baptized. The Bible says heaven opened, the spirit came upon him. The following scripture says he was carried to the wilderness. He was carried to the wilderness to be prepared by God himself. Hallelujah. We know, we know the story of, of David. Immediately, immediately prophet Samuel arrived, anoint him as king of Egypt, of, 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 of Israelites. Immediately. He was hated by Saul. He has to go now back through the processing. Those processes now last, depending on how God determined it to last. Because each and every one of us has different assignments by God. If you got a bigger assignment, your processing can go a long period of time. But if your assignment is not that big, your processing can be last for a short period of time. But God processing, as a child of God, you must go through it. There is no shortcut about that. You must go through it. Hallelujah. We know the story of, of, of um, Joseph in the Bible. Joseph did not do anything wrong with his own family. His problem was that he has been chosen by God. That was his problem. He was hated by his own family, his own brothers. And he was sold to, to, to slavery. And it was God's processing for his own life. Because God looks our vision. God looks what he has given each and every one of us. So he allows us to go different processing based on his vision and mission that he has designed for each and everyone to carry. Hallelujah. So if you are a Christian, I urge you. If you are a child of God, I urge you. If you are going to church, I urge you. Please sit down. Allow God's word to wash your spirit. Allow God's word to transform you. If God's word has transformed you, if your mind has been renewed by God's word, Set the Holy Ghost. Ask God to baptize you with His Spirit. He will do it. He does as He will. He can direct you to a man of God for prayer, or He can bring him to his, his presence in your room, in your bedroom, or in your church. Like the Bible tells us in the book of Acts 2, that when the apostles were in the upper room praying, the Bible says there was a violent wind. The wind, the wind came, and the wind came with the Holy Ghost, and all of them were baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So if we must stand for God, we must be baptized with God's Spirit. We must be baptized with God's Spirit. Without God's Spirit in our life, our Christianity will be full of jokes, emotions, empty thoughts, noise. Yes, noise. Today you go to the website, you go to the internet, you go to the social media. You find many brethren, many brethren that they have been hurt by so-called pastors, or prophets, or fake men and women of God. The question that you can ask yourself is that what, why were they hurt? 
Why were they hurt in those places? Because they were being led to those places by their emotion, by their feeling, by their emotion. Because when you have God's spirit in you, it guides your steps. You can walk into those places that they are not the right places. But God's spirit himself will remove you back out of those places. You can walk to a place based on your emotion, based on your feeling, or based on what you have heard. When you sat down, one hour, two hours, one day, three days, one month, two months, God's spirit will communicate to your spirit. You are in the wrong place. And you will leave that place. The question is that all these brothers and sisters that they have been hurt, I really have sympathy for them. But God is calling you. If there is a fake, there is an original. Don't give up. Look for a living church. Sit down when you find one. Allow the teachings there to renew your mind. Allow the teaching there to rewatch your heart, to rewatch your mind. Allow God to remake you. Like what the Bible tells us in, Je in, in, in Jeremiah 18, 18 verse 1. That the potter made the pot again. The pot was mad. The pot was, was, was not right. The potter make it again. Allow God to make you again. God can make you again only if you allow him to his word to wash your mind. Allow his word to renew your mind. Allow his word to refocus you back to Christ. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm here to encourage you. God loves you. God loves you. We need to allow God's word to watch us. If you can continue to read in that book of John 15 from verse 3. John 15 from verse 3. I'll read in Jesus' name. He said, you are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now, Jesus was telling his disciples that they are already clean because of the words. Remember that Jesus spent three good years with his disciples. That three years was a full-time basis. Remember, sir, remember the apostle. When he meet each of them, he would say, come and follow me. They were living together, staying together, sleeping together, going everywhere together. He teach them day and night. If we want to put it in our today curriculum, we say it was six years, seven years teaching, full-time teaching. Because when we go to our schools, maybe four hours, five hours, we are out of class. But Jesus spent 24 hours teaching them. In the day, he would take them in a the, in the theory. In the night, he takes them for practical. They're in the mountain praying. In the day, he takes them to the, to the theory. In the night, he takes them to the mountain to pray. Three years, and they are thoroughly training. That is why their mind was being renewed. Today, God is calling you. Surrender yourself to him. Let him wash your mind. It is not enough to call yourself a Christian. If you cannot live by the word of God, it is not enough. It is not enough for you to call yourself a Christian when you are still allowing the loss of the things of this way to be influencing you. It is not enough for you to call yourself a Christian and you are still lost after your own desire, not the desire of God. The Bible says, I will give you the desire of your heart. It is true. But unless, until your desire becomes God's desire, until God possess your heart and your desire becomes God's desire, you begin to desire what God himself desire. You want breakthrough in order to use that breakthrough to reach out to the less privileged, to order to use that breakthrough to reach out to the fatherless, the motherless. Your desire becomes God's desire. You want you want God to give you territory. You want God to give you prosperity, properties. Why? Because you have the same desire for as of God. You want those prosperity, you want those breakthroughs, you want those things to expand God's kingdom here on earth. Unless God's desire possesses our desire. Hallelujah. God loves us, my brother. God loves us, my sister. He gave us his spirit in order for us to live right on this earth. Without God's spirit, no one can say no to sin. 
without God's spirit, no one can live right on this earth. No one, no one, no one can live right without God's spirit. No one can even say no to sin without God's spirit. That's why he gave us his spirit, to live right. Remember Peter, he denied Jesus. Before he received God's spirit, he denied Jesus. He said, I don't know him. Three times he denied Jesus. When the spirit of God came to him on the day of the Pentecost, he stood in the public and preached about Jesus. The Bible said 3,000 people gave their life to Christ that same day. Why? What was the difference? Because the Holy Spirit had taken over him. If you want to go out to do the things of God without God's spirit, you will be disappointed big time. Jesus knew it. He said to his disciples that wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes on you. Fill you with power. He knows. Jesus himself waited for 30 years before he started his ministry. He was not in a rush. Even his mother knew that Jesus was already being used by God. When the disciple, on the, on the feast in Cana, when the wine was run out, the disciple, the mother came to, the, to Jesus and said, the wine is finished. Jesus said, mother, my time has not yet come. Then Jesus' mother turned to the disciple and said, whatever he asks you to do, do it. Because his mother knew he could do it. Hallelujah. But before then, he was waiting on God's time. Waiting for the God's spirit to come upon him. So if we have not yet baptized with God's spirit, we must sit down and continue to learn the things of God. We must sit down and allow God's word to continue to transform our heart, transform our mind. Until then, we must continue to submit to our guidance. Those who God have sent to be our guidance, to teach us the truth of God's words. Hallelujah. Let me just conclude in this passage of the scripture. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 3. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 3. I'll read in Jesus' name. He said, Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cares. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, our words, our church will be full of empty talks. Without the Holy Spirit, even our Christianity will be full of empty talks. Remember, if we say we are Christian, we must be ready at all times to demonstrate God's power and love in our life. Jesus has not called us to be a weak Christian. He has not called us to be Christians without power. He said, those who believe, this sign shall follow them. He did not say pastors, if they believe. He said, those who believe, this sign shall follow them. Now, when you have been born of God, baptized with God's spirit, your life becomes a miracle. The Bible says, for I and my children, we are called for signs and wonders. So you that you are hearing me today, if you are a Christian, God has put you to become signs and wonder in your generation. God wants you to become a signs and wonder in your generation. And you cannot become that signs and wonder if you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So the question this hour, are you a Christian? If you are a Christian, shalom, be blessed. I thank you once again for watching this message. I pray that may God's Spirit continue to guide and protect you. I pray that may you surrender yourself wholly on God's words so that your entire being should be watched with God's Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.